Oops. <laughs> I want to do this replay. I, I do that every now and then. Go ahead. You can open it, John. Oh, thank you so much, Bob. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to RVing in New England. Tonight, we have a special show because tonight is Italian night on RVing in New England. We have been on shows before where we've had one Italian or two Italian or three, but tonight we have one, two, seven. We, we've got a whole bunch of Italians. And um, keep in mind one thing. When we do a show, we don't script it. So we have no idea what was going on, what is going on. And unlike network shows that are reality shows that are scripted, we have ripped up the script and we are starting from scratch. And we want to welcome in from Survivor 1, Survivor 2, Survivor 15, 16, 18, 20. Um, for the what last 18, 19 years, Boston Rob and lovely wife, Amber and their four kids. Now, they have four children, ladies and gentlemen. My only guess to get four kids from the ages of 12, 10, 9, and 7, four girls from the ages of 12, 10, 9, and 7, they're probably duct taped and um, tied in the back of the RV. <laughs> Am I right? They're back there with a big bag of chips. Which oh, a big them. bag of chips. They're a big bag of chips. They're occupied. So really it, it, we it, want to thank it, you so much. The family, the family size bag, Amber. Yes, the yeah. party size bag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we want to thank you so much for taking time from your busy day. I know you're on a um, three and a half week family vacation in an RV. And as I said to everybody before, that uh, of all those Survivor Series episodes, this three and a half week period of your life is going to be, without a doubt, the most challenging, one man, five women, 400 square feet, three and a half weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, wait, wait. that sounds like it has a negative connotation to it. it you... Yeah, I think it does. But <laughs> let me tell you, this guy has got it made. Spending He's got it made every day with five women waiting on him left and right. He's the king of the RV right now. That's He's got it The girls He's like, the my hero. Oh, I'm telling you, this guy. I got to tell you, it hasn't been that bad. We have been having an absolute blast, and the kids are so much fun. So despite what it may seem from the outside looking in, I actually have it pretty good. Well, no, me, but, no, me, I, I get your point, though. Maybe in a couple of years when all four of them are teenagers, it might be a different might be a different situation, but right yeah, now. Yeah, you'll be on uh, S Survivor let me, let me the show, Generation Series. And, uh, let, me show a quick bit, let me show a quick video and see if I can do this without okay. screwing up. I'm, uh, I'm getting really good. Doing, uh, we've had so many people on our social media sites saying they're looking forward to tonight's show. And, um, you know, you got a lot of fans of Massachusetts, so both of you do. Here we go. We're taking this 37-foot... Newmar RV from Western Pennsylvania on the epic Mariano summer road trip. Are you guys ready? Yeah! All right, first stop, Niagara Falls. Let's go. Everybody in. Wow. Feels like yesterday. All right, Feels guys, like we have a quick surprise right? for you. This is our new home for the next three and Yep, that there just keep, there's a, that's a, that would just keep looking. So that was a, we should we should say also that uh, Rob and Amber are working with our friends over at Go RVing, and they're going to develop this into another one of the newbie series that will be on the Go RVing website. So we want to thank Diane McNamara for putting putting us in touch with Rob and Amber, and uh, she's local here in Boston, so we love working with Diane. We've Yep. Done it frequently, and and the folks at Go RVing are fantastic. So watch watch for this with the uh, Go RVing network. Yeah, and Diane also said that every time you mention her name, we she would pay us twenty bucks. So Diane McNamara, <laughs> Diane McNamara, there's a quick hundred bucks, Diane. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a hell of a deal. McNamara, Diane McNamara, Diane McNamara. Diane McNamara. <laughs> but only two of us. We'll cut in on our money. <laughs> 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 Let me ask you this question. Tell us where this trip, where did this trip start? And yeah, we, um, we started in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is Amber's hometown. Okay. We're visiting. It was our niece's high school graduation. 
So that was a starting point of the journey. And so far, we're about halfway through. Right now, as we're talking to you, we're in central Pennsylvania in Lancaster. And we started the first leg of the trip going to Niagara Falls. Oh, you went up and then back down. Okay. Well, we went up and then we went east into New York. Over to Syracuse? George area, New Hampshire, up oh. to Conway, down to Cape Cod, Boston for the 4th of July. We're actually in New York City yesterday at this time. So it is like Survivor meets the Amazing Race. And Go RVing has been absolutely unbelievable with us the entire way, helping us hey. out along the way. And uh, it's been quite an adventure so far. Yeah, you now, are you asking. doing the driving or do they have a, or they provide a driver for you? Come on, come on, I'm doing come all on, the wait, driving. The, guy, the guy's on all these survivor shows, he runs through jungles, he beats up people, you know, and you think he's gonna have some wimp drive the motorhome for him? There's well, no but chance, but I gotta tell you, yesterday when I was driving through the streets of New York City, at some point, I was I was asking myself what I got myself into. <laughs> they let you drive that into New York. They, let, they gave me full reign. They let me take it anywhere, and so I go everywhere with it. And it's not that hot. It's like driving a Cadillac. And I'm did, like this the entire time. <laughs> did you go? That's when I. That's over when I was it's so One time, I, I was in George Washington one time, and uh, and I took my. We went to uh, Bar Harbor, Maine. And I took a 40-foot motorhome, diesel pusher, through the streets of Bar Harbor, Maine. And she had to go in the back of the motorhome. She said, you're going to kill me and you're going to kill all these little old ladies running around up here before you do that. Let me uh, do one more shout-out because shout John out. and I do another show. So we'll plug our other show, the Camper Report Show on the RV Life Network. But I understand, because uh, I just saw an article in RV Life tonight, that they have provided you with the RV Life Pro app. And you're using RV Trip Wizard. To help you guide there, and uh, Patrick Buchanan and Andy Rabinowitz, great yes. guys to work with. We love working with them. Uh, See, Bob, was, gonna be, Bob, he must have read my notes because that was the next thing I was going to say. Because it was my feeling that after the the you must have gone down I ninety five into uh, into New York, okay, from New England, we okay, did. which is always great. Once you hit New Haven, it's like another world, right? <laughs> On I ninety five, but without RV Trip Wizard, you may have ended up tonight on the tip of Long Island instead of Lancaster, PA, without RV Trip Wizard. I got to tell you, the Trip Wizard has been unbelievable. They are awesome. One of my biggest fears going into this was knowing what roads we were going to take based on the height. We're driving a 37 right. foot Newmar that's 13 feet high. And right. I was so concerned about are the bridges, the tunnels, this and that, with the RV wizard you don't have to worry about any of that they tell you exactly where to go yeah. and the directions have been spot on every time so, so it's been awesome. remember, hey we gotta go, don't go on a parkway we, we have to uh, you you've got a bunch of fans on here you lit up the uh airwaves oh. tonight Dante, dante's on fast but not he's up in windsor yeah, maine like boy from the england rv roof bernie colton uh I'm bernie bernie Oh, man, I shouldn't even show you Bernie. Bernie has a radio show up in New Hampshire called All Things RV. So maybe, uh, Bernie, we'll get you some information. Maybe you can have Rob on some Wednesday morning. You can talk about the trip. We, we share, you know, media folks, but Bernie does a great job Not there. Not too for early, Bernie, okay? Not too early. He does the morning show, 5 oh, to 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, Rob. But he's with we pre-taped the night before, okay, Bernie? So look at he's 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 a sales rep for Campers in RV and he's up in you know Merrimack, New Hampshire. He's You're really welcome. good at motorhomes. So now that you've tried one, when you get ready to buy one, Bernie's going to give you a great deal. There we go. There you okay. go. Here's a good friend of ours with the RV Women's Alliance, Jordan Foos. In fact, she's my guest on the Camp Report Show this week. She says, Did I love that interview her. yet. She 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 was one of the founders of what we call the RV Women's Alliance to promote yep. women within the RV industry and career paths. Jerry, she's Plant, out, she, um, Jordan's out in Nevada somewhere, isn't she? Oh, she's Colorado. Colorado. Jerry Plant, Colorado. Cod, Bernie Colton again. What the hell are you looking for? Extra credits tonight, Bernie? Give me a break. <laughs> Teresa, 
Teresa, Le- I- you know what I found to be really awesome with this whole experience is what? just to see the sense of community around everybody that's involved in our being. Everybody's been so super helpful at all the campgrounds. You know, we tell them we're first timers. They're there to help us with absolutely anything we need. And just the fact that the community is so large, you're talking about people from Maine all the way to Nevada. And it truly is like a global adventure. And it's kind yeah. of funny. It's it's like, you know, it's just out there. As soon as RVs pass each other, we're in the waving club now. We're in yeah. the RV oh, waving you got, club. You got the wave yeah. down. No, you right. don't have any. Um, you don't have any uh, lettering on that on that coach or anything. It's not. It hasn't been uh, networkized. I mean, it's no, it's, it's, it's just it's a new clean coach. So it's yeah. not like that extreme got, makeover stuff. Got a oh, question? We haven't had yeah. any of that done to it. No. We're still we're still traveling uh, incognito. Oh, okay. it, this this must be an employee of Pete's. We got to give another shout out to Pete's RV down in Plainville. They helped Rob out with a. With a key problem last week, and and Sandra's asking where is JJ Hill. Well, if if I know Chad Shepard, he better be back at the office selling a few more RVs, Sandra. But they uh, absolutely did help us out in a big way too. You know, we've been doing this journey, like I said, for about a week and a half now. We're about halfway through it, and we've had almost no problems at all. The one snag we ran into is I lost the keys. Not the keys to the RV, but the keys to the bins underneath. And uh, as you guys know, the keys to the bins open up where the power is, where the water, the hookup, everything. And we went back looking for it in the middle of the night. We couldn't find it. And those guys over there in Plainville, they came through in a big way for us. So yeah, thank okay. you guys. Thank you. The, 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 King, question yeah. that, the question that's on everybody's mind is this. And Bob's going to go through. Our, uh, see, the beauty of this show is we don't have to script it because we have the best guests in the country. And there are times, a couple of years ago, Bob was doing the show in Italy. I was in Massachusetts and we had a guest in Texas. Wow. So, you know, through the power of the internet. The big question that everyone wants to know is, what was it like the first time emptying the black tank? <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you, I was... At first, a little bit apprehensive. I was told by everybody, make sure you wear gloves. Gloves. So I put the gloves on. And it was so easy. It wasn't hard at all. You hook up a hose one end. You hook the other end up to the sore. You pull the latch. That's it. I t- oh, but one wait, thing. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. You, you've got this thing. you got this whole lifestyle figured out in a week and a half. You know it's no, a great no, no, community. No, no. You know it's no. easy to do. What? The one step that he forgot is to make sure that that hose is secure to the <laughs> RV before you pull that latch. Well, he, he obviously pull that latch. It's like right. a parachute, baby. But Listen, he obviously pulls well because you just turn it. It's you got to make sure it's locked. Well, you <laughs> right. do make sure Amber's it's getting the kick you out of it. Sound like you're speaking from experience. I am speaking from experience, <laughs> and I have the dirty clothes to. <laughs> Look at Every, everybody, everybody on the right here. All, right. all of our guests. Let's ask them. All of our guests. Let's ask them. If people's strategy. They told us how hard it could be and how terrible it could be. So that's the psychology. The worst. Yeah. And then it, it was just up up from there. So you yeah. know. Well, it was well, a little bit intimidating I, I, at first driving this RV for the first time. I've never taken on an adventure like this, but I have to tell you, like. Uh, it's not as hard as anybody would think. It's pretty easy. Wait, you just got to learn to slow down on the exit ramps. Amber, Rod. have you gotten behind the wheel yet? The I have wait. not, and I will oh. not be getting behind oh. the wheel. Have I, not. I have a whole other job happening from the right behind the captain's seat for the rest of the 30 feet of the RV. I'm taking care of the four children during all these long drives. So, okay. I'm so he's sure. like, wait, we got to back up a little bit. With all due respect, Rob, nothing in your life compares to this. You, you were on the island, you're on Survivor, you're on Amazing Race, and now you're just driving a 37 foot motorhome, but this is the highlight of your life. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Bob, that this adventure is like, I don't know how I didn't find it sooner because I absolutely love it. I love the freedom that goes along with driving an RV, go where you want, when you want. You don't have to answer to anybody. Take your time, see the country, 
And, uh, you know, I love the entrepreneurial, you know, not knowing what's going to happen. And right. that feels like what this lifestyle is all about. Well, so, okay. We're I mean, a- our kids are in school, but I can definitely see us doing this in summers to come. Okay. okay. Bernie, Bernie Colt, Bernie Colton, are you listening and taking notes? Jim, okay. Jim Rose on from Maine. If you ever get up to Maine, uh, Jim's with Silver Moose Restorations. This guy restores Airstream trailers and does it extremely well. And here is my good friend, Don Polk. Hi, Bob and John, Rob and Amber, our favorite survivors. So awesome. Uh, they run RV Education 101. And uh, they, they are the best consumer education company in our business. In and fact, Donna, uh, if you want to what? get a get a book, get one of Mark's books to send to these guys to read or or one of those things or one of their videos. Uh, let, me, here. let me do. Let me do better. Don, uh, send if you would send me a code for Rob and Amber to uh, access the the site on the new online streaming. And then uh, the RV orientation book is on there, but we'll we'll get you a code to uh, get into the site for uh, their their books and their online training stuff. Uh, it'll help kill the, the ride down the road. But Don, I, in fact, I was on with Don and Mark this morning. I just hadn't uh, caught up with them for a while, so he's on his way. In fact, he's on his way up to Pennsylvania. If you got anything in the uh, truck, Don, they go into the Carlisle Car Show and they're visiting Mark's mother up in Pennsylvania. Carlisle. Uh, yeah, he's going to the show. And, oh, 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 Harrisburg. Mark, okay. Mark, Mark yeah. is on too. See, they they're both on. Now, Jordan, wait, wait, what's Jordan saying? Amber, I love Amber. Amber. Tapping it's for a Amber. party over here tonight. It's a party over here on the stream tonight, boys. It, 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 it sounds like it. Okay, here's the thing you're going to find out, you two, um, because you're traveling incognito and you still see the warm welcome. You see the genuineness of our viewers. And the thing is this, even on this list of people that we have on the right, I don't know, can you see it on your phone? Yes. Okay, I don't know if you can read it because it's a small screen. But we have every different occupation imaginable here, okay? And the thing with our viewers is that when you pull into, when you get into your RV, it doesn't even have to be in a campground, your title, your background, your education, your W-2, are all thrown out the window and everybody's the same. And you will find, I'll guarantee you, as you go into a campground, um, and if you look puzzled at all about hooking up your power or your water or your electricity, you'll have three people over there to help you out, okay? And that's just the way our viewers are. And the beauty of it is, is that you're doing it without a TV logo on your background, on your back, so they're helping you out because they're real people, not because they think you're, um, you know, somebody is, from is, TV. Can true, you read yeah, this we're one? Very, we've been welcomed in everywhere we've gone. It's been great. The people have been wonderful. Rob, can you, can you read that? It's a member of your fan club. I'm going to have if, to put my glasses on, Bob. <laughs> well, I, I, I can read it. It's from Lauren. I see. It says, hey, Rob, it's Mrs. T from BC High Carpool. Max's mom. I remember her. Hi, Mrs. Tomac. You went to BC High. I thought you went to Zavarian. I went to BC High for about a year and a half, and then I switched to Zavarian for oh, you were, my sophomore, junior, and senior year. You were uninvited, huh? Uninvited I wasn't back? Uninvited, you know, it was a lot. I took two trains and a bus to go to school every day from Kansas. Yeah, yeah. But we lost their volume. Oh. Are you still yeah. there? Yeah. Yep. Nice to you. You're back. Sorry, Let's go back to some, some fans' comments, Bob. Let's go yeah. to Dawn. We went Dawn. Lisa, that's huge. Hope we get tour that's tonight. Right. Whatever that means. Or Lakeville, Mass. Uh, question, West. did your survivor experience prepare you for life in an RV with your kids? <laughs> Gabriel, Gabriel Winston. You want to know something? I think like what it takes to play survivor, the number one quality you need is the ability to adapt to your situation. Lots of challenges in that game, different obstacles. I think our beings like that as well. Life in general, you know, you you adapt to your situation and you kind of just 
go with it and figure it out along the way. You don't have to have everything planned. Yeah, it's a go with the flow lifestyle. You have to not, you have to be okay with, you know, being spontaneous and, right. and you just gotta, kind you of going and, think, Yeah, you got to be able to think on your feet and respond quickly. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, Amber and I both, like, we are adventure spirits. You know, that's why we, we decided to do those shows in the first place. And that's like one of the things that we're really enjoying about this vacation and our kids as well, because not only just the RVing, but all the fun things we've been doing along the way, we've taken them zip lines at some of the campgrounds, kayaking, fishing, we're, we're really embracing uh, everything that all the campgrounds have to offer. I guess your fire making skills come in handy, though. Fire making skills. Fires, yeah. <laughs> for sure. That was, that, was probably easy. that was probably easy for you. All right. Dawn, <laughs> Dawn says if she knew, in my fault, because I didn't tell her, she said if I knew, we would have given them access to our training. And then she says she will. So we'll we'll get you access to the training in those. They're in awesome. Williamsport. They're in Williamsport awesome. right now. They're in Williamsport, yeah. Come visit Atlanta. Karen Karen Bernard says, "Come visit Atlanta." And beautiful area, Helen. And let's see, Helen. What did, what did Helen say? We have great Greeks. Oh, great! Oh, here, here, here it is. Here, here, here's her first one. Hi, Boston, Robin Amber. Personally inviting you to visit us in the Catskills. Catterskill Falls, the land of Rip Van Winkle. Wow. Get wow. get another invite right there. Take the, take the kids to see uh, Rip Van Winkle. Wow! How cool! Well, yeah, well. I mean, there's that's the thing. There's so many possibilities, and like Rob was saying, we can see many summers to come with us going and exploring the whole entire country. And it, we keep and, asking the kids, you know, what has been their favorite part, and how great of a summer has this been so far? And it's going to be so hard to top this summer. You know, we thought we've done a lot of great things before this, but now that we've done this, we're not going to be able to top it. There's only a week and a half. I know, I know. but we, we, just fit started. In, we have fit in so much in that week and a half. It's crazy. But you, that's you the thing. Like, you, don't see, you... you don't really get to see the country the way you're able to see it in an RV. Right. And that's what I'm because all the places that we've been to, some of them I've been to before, but you don't see them the way you can see them in an RV. Like I've traveled a lot extensively throughout the country, but usually it's airplane to hotel, right. to dinner, right. to city and back. But okay. this other part it, that it, you're it, able it, to so, experience so what's like, well, well, really cool. Your home where, travels you, with you. Where are your next, where's your next stop after this? Give, give us a little bit more of your itinerary. Yeah, so we're right now we're in central Pennsylvania and we're gonna be heading into Virginia, through the Tennessee Valley, down through Chattanooga, and probably into Georgia, making our way back to Florida. Okay, I would suggest even, and well, there's arguments on this, don't take an RV on the Blue Ridge Parkway or Skyline Drive. It's just, it's not made for that RV with a rookie driver. Okay, okay. I, you it's, know what, I think that's, I believe you on that, because uh, we've actually been to the Blue Ridge Mountains several times before, and if the Blue Ridge Parkway is anything like the roads that we take to get to the Blue Ridge Mountains. Yeah. It's, it's, a one lane, it's a one lane road, and you know what, if somebody's coming the other way with an RV and you have to veer to the right, you're off the road and you're down a cliff, yeah. and we don't want to have... We don't want to have that happen to you. Jerry, um, Jerry, Jerry Plant has some advice, too, because yeah. there was talk about going up to the gas, Catskills. He says, Jerry says, oh, God, don't take the Platte Clove Road in the Catskills. So just make yeah. a make, make a side note on that. Yeah, yeah uh, for sure. So, so even in the, the course of a day, do, do you just decide to get off on a side road or just – pull into a winery and have some wine and cheese while you watch the sunset. I mean, there's just so many great things that you can do with an RV. So at this point, Amber, even in a week and a half, what's, what's your most exciting part so far? And it, it'll, it'll be surpassed. I'm sure. Finding the yeah. keys, finding the I keys. Mean, finding the keys. Well, that's gross. Yeah. Yes. It's like Jim, Jimmy and uh, Jay, JJ for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I have to say, I think our very first stop in Niagara Falls um, is really sticking with me because it was our first stop. So the excitement on the kids' faces was just so genuine and they just had no idea, you know, 
what they were in for, really. You know, we had talked about what we were going to be doing and driving in the RV. You know, the first time they saw it, they were so excited. And then the drive up to Niagara Falls, they were just having a blast. And then getting there and experiencing it. And it, it was just a set great... The tone. Yeah, it set the tone. And it was just a great start for our vacation. And it's you, just been nonstop fantastic moments from there on. Did too. you take him on the Maid of the Mist? We did. We went on the Maid of the Mist and we were on the top deck and we got soaking wet. Oh. <laughs> and we were just like uncontrollably just laughing out loud the entire time. We just couldn't believe it. it the falls were absolutely gorgeous. And what was so fantastic is we went out on the Maid of the Mist during the day. We went out to dinner and then we came back at night and we saw the falls lit up at night with all the different colors. I mean, it was just a fantastic day. Well, so remember, remember when you get off the boat, how wet you were and totally soaked. If you ever have an accident empty in the black tank, that's what it's going to be like. <laughs> no, no, don't say that. Bob. The water, Bob. Listen, don't think I'm, 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 I'm speaking from experience. The water's a different color. That's, now, that's, why, that's why they put the outdoor showers in the RVs I, now. I bet you I, I bet you have an outdoor shower in the RV, right? We do have an outdoor shower, no. yeah. The outdoor shower, Sandra, right. asked, Sandra asked about going to the Canadian side. I'm guessing no, because it's not the border's it, not open it, to Canadian first yet. Right. We could see Canada, but we couldn't go to Canada. So, Rob, did you have that hat on in New York City? I absolutely did, yeah. And were there any uh, any uh, your number one salutes given to you? They never, they know better. They wouldn't, they wouldn't dare think about that. Okay. Now, if I had some the Yankees hat in Fenway Park, that'd have been a different story. Yeah, totally different story. Everybody in totally New York was story. fine with it. Yeah, actually, everybody in New York was was really great. We had a lot yeah. of. Um, not really so, nice people have you know, Rob, tell us a little bit about your your website because I know you've got a lot of fans on here. They're, they're, we we won't be able to get to all the comments, but tell us a little bit about your website and and what you got going there, so people can continue to follow you. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, like just yeah, in right. general, BostonRob.com is the website, but they uh, there's all different facets of my life on there, from my construction business to my cooking endeavors, to, you know, just just everyday information about me and the family and what's going on. People can also follow us on Instagram at Boston Rob, on Twitter, uh, Facebook. You know, we have all the fan sites and stuff going on. And, uh, you know, check it out. Check out. Tell us about the cookbook. Seeing it, seeing the cookbook. it's Italian and yeah. we're all Italian. No, he doesn't have the hat. Favorite. Look at that handsome guy. No hat on the cover. They told me no hat on the cover. Uh, uh, so that was uh, a project we did as a family last year during the pandemic when everybody was kind of holed up inside. It was like literally a group family effort where we decided to make our own cookbook and everybody contributed their own recipes. All the kids put their favorite recipes in there. Amber had a few. My mom, my grandma. There's all kinds of recipes in there. We had a photographer come out. We made all the dishes in two days. And then I worked with an editor to write it and self-published it. And uh, it's yeah, been a self -published, great smart It's actually sold out twice. I believe it's back in stock. And if people want to get a copy, they can get a copy of it at bostonrob.com as well. Okay. Okay. So, Amber, what's your, yeah. what's your favorite recipe in the book? My favorite recipe? Or no, Amber's? Amber's. Hers. Amber's. Hers. Oh gosh, um, I like the meatballs. The meatball recipe is really, really good. Um, his, uh, I mean, his steak. I'm not even really that big of a steak fan, but his steaks are the out of this world. The Boston yeah. Rob oh. We made it at the campground when we were in uh, Lake George, New York. We made the Boston Rob ribeye at the campground outside on an open flame. I'm gonna, just, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get get the book and try that on the grill up here in Maine this summer. That sounds fantastic. You know, we've talked a lot about the girls. You referenced the girls. Uh, would on. you like to? Hold on. When uh, Bob says, I'm going to get the book, basically what he's, what he's going to do is he's going to ask you for a comp. Copy. We're gonna send. We're gonna send Bob a book. We'll send Bob I didn't a book. say that. And if you'd like okay. one too, we'll send one to you. Of okay. Course. See, the fact is, Zagami yeah, doesn't. That's why, that's why he said it that way. He's he, smart. He, Look he, at this he, guy. He, he knows. He's, he's, right. he's, he's an Italian who doesn't cook. Doesn't cook. 
At least I cook. So let me let me ask a question here. You obviously have both of you have an entrepreneurial spirit because most people, when they get on one of those reality shows, they have six months of fame, and then they become a hey, do you remember somebody named so and so? You've been parlaying this thing for 21 years. Okay. Um, where did this entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit come from? And the fact is, you've got another series coming up, right? This celebrity makeover thing. Um, yeah. tell, so tell us about. Okay. So, tell us I how mean, you got. It came, the hustle really came from my mom and dad. You okay. know, like they, they're working class people from Boston. My dad was an electrician, my mom was an x ray tech over at Mass General. And they always worked hard, but they always did a little extra. My dad started to invest in real estate and he was always doing something different. Yep. And I saw that as an opportunity to grow. So I kind of picked it up as well. So like people see me from Survivor, they know me from Survivor, but the truth is it's a lot more than that. And all the things that I do promote and that I'm passionate about they're actually things that I care about. I love working with my hands. I love construction. I love, you know, cooking. And I think that's why I've been able to parlay it into 21 years. Okay. So you make your own dough, I presume. Of course. With the pizza? Are you talking about pizza? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I got to be honest no, with you. This no, last no, weekend no. over 4th of July, Dad has a pizza oven at his house. But my Uncle Jim, who has a bakery in Hyde Park, has been there for almost 75 years. And I went down to the bakery and I picked up dough from him. Oh, okay. We're cooking for 30 Wait. people. What's, what's the name outdoor, of the bakery? Let's outdoor give your uncle a little, a little, a little yeah. plug here. What's the name of the bakery? It's BC Bakery. BC, BC. Bakery. And it's in Reedville, actually, right, yep. right in Hyde Park. Right here. Yeah. Right. Yep. yeah. Yeah. So, on Como Road. So, John, so John wants to know if you make your own dough. When John wants Italian food, he opens up a can of Chef Boyardee. Oh, See, my goodness. Tell him, tell him, Rob. We try to tell him. He comes on the show and he holds up this can. This is guy's a born Italian, and he has Chef Boyardee in his house. Even if he didn't eat it, the fact that he has it in his house is a cardinal sin. No good. Everybody right. knows that. My dad was cooking sauce and meatballs for two days back in Boston over Fourth of July. Amber will okay. tell you. So it is sauce. Not, have homemade sauce. It is sauce, not gravy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's sauce, sauce in Boston. It's okay. Boston it's right. Sauce. Okay. Yeah. right. It, it, you want it's right. gravy? It's okay. I don't have a problem with gravy, but no. yeah. gravy goes from, on mashed, pota mashed potatoes. Yeah, That's I great. agree. Gravy yeah. is for turkey and mashed potatoes. Yeah, you have to know that if you have Italians here, the food, the the discussion had to lean toward food at some time or another. But um, and Angela says you were such fun on the Amazing Race, and let's see what else we got. To, let's see. Michelle said, I love Boston, Rob, okay, and Amber. So uh, I started something before. You, you've mentioned the girls a couple of times. Uh, would you like to bring them out? Would they like to be on TV? You do not have to. We don't. They're, they're, I'll, they're go, I'll go ask them, and I'll see who wants to come. <laughs> okay. and you might end up doing, just so you know, you might end up doing a show of four girls here in a minute. Yeah. Take or, the maybe the or maybe not. We're, 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 we're game, Rob. We're game. Okay, let's gamble. We'll see. Yeah. So, Amber, where yes. did you get your uh, enthusiasm, your outdoor uh, lifestyle, the, the challenge to go to Survivor and uh, go your yeah, own way well, and then meet right there? I mean, it's been with me since I was a kid. Um, I was just an outdoorsy girl from the from as long as I can remember. I remember I was the, you know, I could climb all the trees, the highest out of all the neighborhood kids, and I was just always outside playing and getting dirty and just having fun. And uh, I remember I just graduated from college when the very first season of Survivor came out, and I had gotten just a random job trying to figure out what I was, you know, really gonna do, and during probably the third episode of Survivor, I was living at home watching it with my parents. I said, you know what? I think I want to try out for this show. Next thing I know, I'm auditioning. They call me for season two and the rest is history. And I mean, I just love the sense of adventure and challenging myself. And, 
and it's just led to so many amazing things. I mean, of course, I, I met my husband on Survivor. Now I have four beautiful daughters, and now we're doing this amazing RV trip. So, I mean, how could I not, you know, keep craving more? Oh, 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 oh. There's oh merchandise. The Wait a minute. I got the I love Rob. You're using, You're using your daughters. You're using your daughters. You're right. <laughs> Love you it. These are my two oldest. This one right here is Lucia. She's the one that just turned 12 on 4th of July. Oh. And this is Karina, who is 10. Okay. Now, how come they all have the same middle name, Rose? You know, that's a family tradition on Rob's side of the family. Um, I think almost all of his first cousins that are girls, um, girls obviously, um, have the middle name Rose. And his grandmother's name was Rose. Um, yeah. Is that correct, Rob? Is that right? That is yeah, correct. so they carried on yeah. the tradition, just passing. It's yeah. kind of a neat connection that they all have. Well, someday you bring all four of them on, and I'll bring all six, six of you. Yeah, go the other way. Go oh, the other way. That's Maybe. fantastic. Yeah, but... Look at that. Oh, yeah. how fun. You know, that's been kind of cool is along the way, the kids just all kind of seem to just play together when you go to these campgrounds, you know, not even knowing each other. It's like they all know each other in some past life or something like that. They just connect and bond and play together well. You know, well, you know when I do the, when I do the uh, seminars at the Boston RV show, which we have every January, that's the one thing that I tell people. Because we have a lot of people at the show that have never been in an RV. And they say RVs and the RV lifestyle are the last vestige of what America used to be like. You know your neighbor. The kids can go out and play. They'll come back. They're safe. They have fun. They, like you said, Amber. They just meet new people, and and yeah, the, so they're gonna become the, lifelong, lifelong friends. Yeah, it's like you said. It, it reminds yeah. me of when I was a kid. It's true. We would leave. We would just go play with the neighbors. Our parents just trusted that you know that yeah. that you know we were up the road just having fun and with you know every, we knew everybody was in good hands, and that's how it is with the with the campgrounds too. And you know, four of those kids were just down at Normandy Farms. I don't know if you've ever been down there, but you will soon. Um, if you don't bring that RV back, you can go. It's down in it's down in Mansfield, right by Foxborough Stadium. Oh, okay. A couple of miles yeah. south of the uh, stadium. Yeah. I said so to uh, I said to thinking. them just the other night what what was the best part? And they said meeting new friends at the bike park. Ah. Uh, yeah. So girls, yeah. you're very lucky. You know. You know why? You know why you're lucky? Because you look like your mother. <laughs> 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 so let's let's let let them let let's ask them a question. Um, what what's been your favorite part so far, ladies? Um, well, I really like New York and Niagara Falls. Getting to see the waterfall and everything. Mm. Have you seen that? Have they seen? Have you gone by the Amish people yet in in Lancaster with the horse and buggies? No, but we saw some of them uh, right as we were leaving Pittsburgh. Yeah. Right after yeah. we left okay. Western Pennsylvania, well, we did see some of them there. Yeah. I mean, Lancaster County is the, it's outside of Indiana. It's the Amish hub in North, you know, the East Coast. So right. yeah. absolutely, before you leave there, you get get down into the center of town where the kids don't have TVs. They don't have phones. They don't right. use cars. And um, a lot of times in the summer, you know, and all the kids have their hair the same, the same length and the clothes are all the same color. But they'll be fascinated with that, even at that, you know, 12 year old and 10 year old age. Yeah. When I um, when I was in college, I went to Westminster College, which is in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania. And it's a big Amish um, community up there. Yeah. yeah. So very familiar with it. Yep. What about you, Lucia? What was your favorite part of the trip? Um, I really like the adventure part. With all the zip lines and the obstacle courses that reminded me a lot of Survivor. Did they have a, a rope course and everything? Yeah, we told them they were doing Survivor training. So I, I was going to say, they, they started their training kind of early. Yeah. That's right. We got to prepare. We got to, yeah. you know, we're raising winners here. Okay, yeah. Rob, here's, here's another idea for you, Rob. Survivor for Kids by Rob Mary, Rob and Amber's Survivor for Kids. I can see great the program. Idea, Bob. It's a great idea. I think they should absolutely do it. And I think I'd be a great host for that show. You would. So <laughs> you go ahead and take it to the network, pitch it, 
and attach me as a host, and I'll do it. All right. right. I'll, 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 I'll talk to Diane, and we'll do a little promo <laughs> and start to, start to promote it. that idea. Yeah, so, Am Amber, do you get a special bonus because Rob's born on Christmas Day that you don't have to get him a birthday present? <laughs> the thing is, now i got to think of double the gifts. I have to get him Christmas gifts and birthday gifts. You know, it's nice to have it spaced out. So you no, you don't do that. You can you work the other way around. You just say, this is your birthday and your Christmas gift. Right. You know, it doesn't quite work that way. And actually, we have an entire family of holiday birthdays. Lucia's birthday was just the other day on the 4th of July. <laughs> Our other daughter, Issa, was born on Cinco de Mayo. My <laughs> other daughter, Adelina, was born. Uh, well, she wasn't born on Father's Day, but it fell on Father's Day this year. And Karina was supposed to be born on Thanksgiving, but she came two weeks late. So oh, the whole oh, family yeah. is holiday birthday. Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> that's so funny. So um, what I would suggest when you begin your journey again, when you leave where you're going now and head to the next place, um, if time permits, stay off the interstates and stay on the local roads. And you will see some go through these little towns in Pennsylvania, these little towns in Virginia, and they'll look out the window. You know, their nose will be against that against that glass looking out and seeing things so different from from the South Shore. You know, well, it's so true. We were actually on our way to New Hampshire and we were we had our eyes peeled because we kept seeing moose crossing signs. Oh. So we Really yeah. wanted to see a moose. Yeah, we did end up seeing a moose, but we did see a bear out in the field as we were driving. So you're yeah. so right. I mean, the entertainment of just looking outside while we're driving through all these back roads—you never yeah. know what you're going to see. We've seen turkey and deer and all different kinds of things. It's been really cool. Yeah, and even if you take them into the supermarkets, like you're down in Virginia, it's it's so totally different. They don't have any cold cuts in the supermarkets. <laughs> they just have bologna and cheese. That's all they have. You know, well, no, you got a small pasta section. <laughs> yeah, talk, talking about deer, you got to be careful in Pennsylvania. If if they yeah. are not the highest rate of deer deaths in the country, they got to be really close to it. They are all over the road. They'll jump out of the bushes and the trees. It's I I, I was out there doing a motorhome test one one year. I went around a corner, and it was a sea of deer. There must have been 200 deer from the road, the, the side, in the grass. They were just all over the place. You, could, you couldn't even move. Oh. Thank you, they, they want to go back. They want to go back and see their sisters. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye. Great time. You know, it's, it's true. Growing up in Pennsylvania, uh, there are so many deer, so many yeah. deer. You do have, yeah. to really, you have to be have your eyes peeled and, and be really careful and look out. Hey, um, John, John, John ask him deer, a Give him a couple more questions. I'm going to be rude and go over to the side here, but I want to make sure. We've got so many comments tonight. You yeah. guys talk, and I'm going to check some comments. Well, the only deer that I've ever hit in my life was in Lancaster. We were on our way to a Penn State game, and it just jumped over the Jersey barrier, and bango, that wow. was it. But the other question I have for you is this. Um, are you, what are you doing food-wise? Are you restauranting it, or are you um, going into well, the supermarkets? What's your deal? Well, I have to say – Food wise, I'm not sure if you consider it food or not, but uh, we decided right from the start, everywhere we go, we get ice cream at every stop. So right, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the girls were excited about that one. So we always find an ice cream shop wherever we go. But yeah. uh, it's we been could, a good mix. It's yeah. been a good well, mix. I think, you know, well, we're cooking some nights. We're doing some nights by the fire. We uh, we broke up the trip in like uh, over 4th of July weekend. We spent a few days at my parents' house in Boston. So they did all the cooking there, and now we're back on the road. So we're gonna be we're gonna be doing probably a good mix of both. Yeah. I'd say 50 yeah. 50. Tonight we're having tacos. So we're oh, okay. Have tacos. And try try the loc go to the local restaurants. Even if you even if you don't know where to go and you see a police officer, stop and or or stop into the fire station and say, hey, where do y'all go? Where do y'all? Where do you guys oh. eat? I was oh, just talking to you. What is that? Where do you use? Use. You're supposed is to that say down, use. Is that down use. in, uh, you, when you pass the Mason-Dixon line, you stop dropping the y'alls? Yeah, you start yalling. But, <laughs> um, you know, and find out the local restaurants because you'd be amazed at some of the local specialties that they have. Just even as close to New England as Pennsylvania, they have, you know, stuff that you don't get at home. And the kids 
will remember this stuff. You'd be amazed at what the kids are remembering. And, um, that's you know, true. I mean, yeah, definitely fully experience all the little towns that you go through and yep. finding the places for sure. And one other crazy thing, I saw Walter Swenson is on here somewhere, but but our daughters and Walter's granddaughters and grandson are once a year friends that they meet up at a camping event that we all go to in September. And, and they're all, you know, the countdown is on. When are we going to see Abby? When are we going to see Abby? And your kids may um, encounter that same thing where you where you run into somebody. Oh, that's cool. I, I just put Walter's note. Walter's note. Rob and I were talking about this the oh. other day. Uh, oh, Walter says, we, we, kids will be talking about this trip even when they are adults. My kids yeah. are 44 and 40, and they still talk about the camping adventures when they were kids. Yeah. That, yeah they will I hope talk so. about that's, that's what we want. The rest of sure. their lives. They, they will, in like fact. We definitely hit the sweet spot in terms of their ages because they are loving every bit of it. And, uh, you know, they're, they're really embracing the adventure. So that's like what we try to instill as parents. You know, we don't like we try to get them away from the screens all the time and the computers get outside and do stuff. And uh, that's what this trip has been about. And it's been pretty awesome. Right. See, the thing that Bob doesn't tell you about the reason his kids remember the trip so much, it's because they were at a rest area and the kids got out to use the bathroom. Bob didn't know they were gone and drove away without him. So it wasn't until the police tracked them down 20 miles later and said, get back there and pick those two girls up. That's why they remember. They, they've been Burned into their memory forever. They, you know, memory. they were 14 and 12. And he said, eh, they're just in the back. Oh, but, my uh, God. It, is that, that true? Is, that, that is that's a big lie. <laughs> <laughs> this guy that just kicked down there, Jason Cole. He, he does that. Because I, I I rub him on the uh, chef boy ID. So you stop for ice cream every 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 place you go. John, uh, said that, but we've been John, John to touch out the local market for chef boy ID wherever you go. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Tell that, it, and what was the other one? Chef boy ID and uh, Franco American. Yeah. No. Basic Helen, says, Helen says good time to take the kids before they become cranky, miserable teenagers that just want to be on their phones and away from their parents. Enjoy every minute, you guys. Love your biggest Survivor fan. Helen Pretorius Spring. Oh, she's, yeah. the one, uh, she's the one up in Rip Van Winkle land. But okay. now here's talk about kids. Jason Cole. Is Jason was, on? Jason just got on. And Jason has been taking his kids, and I think they're, I don't know, 19 and 14 now. But okay. he's been taking them since, you know, they were in diapers, I believe. Right, Jason? Wow. Um, you know, he lives in Rhode Island. He was a president of, of Good Sam. Hey, we should have you guys come to the, um, Bob, get him an RV from Pete's or something to come to the Normandy Farms in September with the Northeast Charity thing. If they're uh, back, but they don't, they live in Florida now. Oh, you do? We live we in, do. Florida. Yeah, we live in yeah. Florida, yeah. Oh, whereabouts? Whereabouts? Just away from the cold, harsh Boston winters. We live in uh, Perdido Key, right outside of Pensacola. Right in the Gulf Oh, up in the, up in the, uh, the Gulf. What do you yeah. call it? The, the panhandle. Ah, yes. okay. So 19 and 14 now. But Jason, you've been taking those kids since they were really, really young. So, um, you know, from 19, that perspective. Is, what, is, a 19, is a 19 and 14 already? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, so Amber and, um, and Rob, what questions would you have to our audience about RVing? Any well, question whatsoever, and we'll get we'll get a great answer. And, and Bob and I will even we, we, we have a brilliant. We'll, we'll leave it up to them. We have a brilliant audience. Well, we uh, we're enjoying this trip so much that we're already planning next summer. So where where does everybody suggest that we go next summer? Yeah, what's a what's a I the reason why we started with Niagara Falls somewhere I've never been and I wanted to see it so bad. Next on my like hit list, like a place that I want to go that I've never been to is like Montana. I hear like Big Sky, yep. like uh, the national parks out that way, the Redwood Forest, mm -hmm. Grand Canyon. So I'd love yep. to hear like what people's favorite places are yep. out west. Yep. Well, Jason says his daughter's name is Autumn. Her first camp out was October and she was born in August. Wow. So what's that make her? August is two months old. Yeah, wow. Jason, Grand, Jason, Jason says Grand Canyon. 
in yep. any of those. Lines. Now, Walter, now, Walt, has Walter gone on his cross country trip yet, or is it just? No, he's, he's still, in New York right now. He's had a good Sam. He's had a good Sam rally. Yosemite Park. What's that? Yosemite National Park. Yep. It's National totally Park. Weird. National parks are tough. Uh, yeah. Some of them now are booked out. They're they're actually taking reservations, and some of them have actually stopped uh, RVs and cars from going in. They just let the people go in. So I've you gotta, heard that. I've heard that they're uh, really crowded these days. Everybody is. Yeah. Is yeah. So you got to plan that. If you're going to do that, you got to plan that one. Uh, you got to plan it now for next year. Oh well, yeah. Oh absolutely. Miss yeah. Miss McNamara just chimed in. Diane says, Custer is South Dakota, and you could go see. Is that a bar? Go see Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. Arches in Utah. John is still lobbying to get his face on Mount Rushmore, but they keep telling him, you know, he's too ugly. So they're not, they're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Bob's going to have one thing, one thing, second. Bob is going to have both of his faces on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I, like I this, this relationship must have been going on for a while. Yes. <laughs> I, I agree with Bernie. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee. That's one of my favorite cities because I love country music. Do you, well, you, love Nashville, right? you guys like country music? Love hmm? country music. We're going. Yeah. Uh, we're going through Tennessee, not not necessarily through Nashville. Okay. Uh, so you, we're gonna, so we're gonna hit Chattanooga. So you, okay. you go yeah. through Tennessee. Uh, you going to go? No. Here's what you're going to do if you go to Nashville. Go south an hour and a half to Lynchburg, Tennessee. Do you know? Do you know what's famous in Lynchburg, Tennessee? Jack Daniels, the Jack Daniels factory, right? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's not a factory. It's a distillery, <laughs> right? They named the interstate highway interchange the Bob Zagami Memorial Interchange. That he, his car knows its way. He's got a GPS, a JD GPS in it. We might need a designated driver if we're going to be stopping there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't it's, buy it there. It's a dry county. Still, still Is it dry. Really? County. Yeah, they, well, they they did change it two years ago. And you can buy some commemorative bottles, but you used to be able to. You could not. You could Are go they to empty? The, no, they're full. But they they okay. they're finally getting it, and and uh, you you can do some sampling now. They they allow some sampling, but for the longest time. You could not drink Jack Daniels at the distillery. When you got done with the tour, they said thank you, and uh, that's it. You know, wow. can't do it. But it's a great, it is a great tour. Absolutely. So, this new show that you've got coming up, tell us about this because maybe you can parlay an RV out of that. Uh, this was great. Uh, it's actually called Secret Celebrity Renovation. It's going to be on CBS. It actually starts this Friday night. Oh, and it's already done. It's in the can. A different celebrity gifts a renovation to someone that's made a difference in their life. And, um, I don't want to spoil it, but but they asked me to do it for somebody that was super important in my life, and I did. And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun series. It's yeah. gonna be a great a great show. Uh, How many episodes? It's a, it's a nice feel good show. We've been uh, you know I feel like our country has been in need for of a of a good feel good show after all that we've Absolutely. been through the past year, and it's it's that type of show. Yeah. How many episodes? Uh, I believe the show is ten episodes. And you're in one. I'm in one, 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 one entire episode per person. So okay, that's I don't how know they do exactly it. what week mine is yet. They haven't released that. I think maybe on Friday they'll give us a lineup. Um, when did you shoot it? We shot it in May. We wrapped in May. The so it was a two and a half week shoot, and we shot in. Right before Mother's Day. Yeah, we started the April 29th, and we wrapped right before Mother's Day. Mm. So about two weeks, two and a half weeks. Okay. Come the fall, will the kids be in live school down down in Florida? Well, like, uh, they, they were in school last year, all year, actually. They go to a private school in Florida, and luckily, they're small classrooms, so they were able to social distance them. They had to wear masks, of, co of course, but... Uh, Fortunately, they had no problems where we were, so we're lucky then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sandra Hollis says, "Stop at Gatlinburg." Anna Kista, I'm told, is beautiful as well. I don't. I, we were on our way down there, and I got sick in April, so I had to A turn around. A lot of people told back. me to go to Gatlinburg. I've heard it's beautiful, especially yeah. in the fall. 
Well, yeah, keep in it, mind. It is, it is in the fall. In the yeah. fall. Also, uh, Great Smoky Mountain National Park is phenomenal. I think it's the largest national park in the system. But if you're down as you're going through there, that's that's another really great place. There's lots of things to do, and, and it's outdoorsy and, and hikes and mountains and lakes and streams. It's really really great. Yeah. 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 Although if you go to Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge now, it's like one big Revere Beach. Um, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> huh? No, 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 no. What Revere Beach used to be, it's all fast food restaurants and, uh, you know, attractions. It, put it this way, there's no natural stuff there. All the natural stuff is in the, is in the park. Well, you know, it's, it's funny you say that, and Rob will appreciate this. The, I dropped my wife at the airport Sunday night because she was flying down to Florida, and I just had this inkling for – he thought he was coming with her, but he didn't tell her he wasn't. <laughs> I, I, I just had this thing. Thought thought. <laughs> I just felt like I had to have a Kelly's roast beef. And I, had, I haven't been in Revere Beach for 20 years, at least. And I get down there. I had trouble finding Kelly's roast beef because there's so many condominiums and apartments. Condo. You see all these condos, and then there's this little Kelly's roast beef. But it, it was still as good as ever. So I, I treated all, myself. All you, all you really had to do was park the car and go into the airport. Because they have Kelly's roast beef inside the terminal. Yeah. Now, uh, now Logan. They do. <laughs> I don't know. Is it still, is it still there? It's the it, they have one inside the terminal. Yeah, I was which, just there in uh, which, I was there in May, and, yeah. I, and I got a roast beef sandwich yeah. at the which terminal, terminal in Logan. Yeah, because I was thinking in my head, wait, Kelly's roast beef, that roast beef, that sounds familiar. And then I remembered you had just gotten one when we were there. Yeah. So, so which terminal has it, Rob? Uh, it's, I believe it's the one, the Delta Terminal. It's either A or B. It's A. It's a. Okay, yeah, it's A. It yeah. might be B. I, 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 um, it might be, it's A or B. I don't remember which one it is. Hey, it's, we got two minutes left. We're one. talking about Kelly's roast beef. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so maybe we should say. <laughs> this is the time that we say during the show, we want to thank you so much for taking time from your busy schedule <laughs> to be with us this evening. And let our audience know that they can find out more about you both and the kids as well at uh, bostonrob.com, not to be confused with broccolirob.com, which is a totally different website, but does have to do with cooking. Delicious. It's a delicious vegetable. Right. So we, we, are, we are wrapping it up. I want to thank you very much. We could, we could probably go for about five hours, and I want to thank Diane for – introducing us to you rob and amber and yeah. It's, yeah. it's been a phenomenal hour i'm sure our fans like it but we'll give you the last word to talk to our fans uh it's just been a pleasure and uh thank you so much for having us the entire rv community embracing us this rv life that we're just starting out has been phenomenal and we're loving it and we hope to uh be involved for many years to come. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun listening to YouTube banter back and forth, but also uh, <laughs> just learning a lot from all the fans writing in and hearing all their suggestions. I can just, you know, I can just tell that we're we've started a good thing, and, and uh, we're going to stick with it. Thank what would you, you say? What would you say to other couples? We got one one thirty seconds. What would you say to other couples your age that have kids around your age that are fearful of? you know, disrupting them from their friends, at least for a summertime. Just do it. Just yeah. do it. It's amazing. It's so much fun. It's easy. It's not nearly as intimidating as it may look from the outside. You can do it. We did it. And, you know, we're just regular people, just like you guys. You've watched us on TV, but I promise you, there are no hidden secrets here. So I would say go for it. Yeah, kids are resilient. You don't give them enough credit. Right. Um, you guys have to give your kids credit and know that they have it in them and they'll love it. And it, it'll be an adventure that they're going to remember forever. Yeah. Hey, we have a lot of, you want to tell them about the comments, Bob? Yeah. If we, we do ask our guests, if you get some time tomorrow and you're traveling or something, if you could go back into the show on our site and, and look at the comments, cause I know we missed a lot and you might want to add your own personal touch or, or answer somebody's question. If you get a chance to do that, we always do that after the show because we just They're on Facebook. Our, 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 you know, this this show survives because of our fans. Period. Wow. It, it, Absolutely. Just, yeah. I just got a note from the former mayor of Worcester, Raymond Mariano, who says he's not related to you. He is not related that I know of. <laughs> I said, I said, Ray, do you know this guy? He goes, No. I said he's a good guy, and he gave me a thumbs up back. Just. Aww. 
<laughs> just this second. So, anyway. Amber, thank you very much, Rob. Delightful. You're always you're always welcome back. Uh, maybe we'll do it again next summer. We'll see where you go next summer after you get your sure. journey planned out. Oh, All right. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.